what were the legal concerns? Let's bring in constitutional law expert and law professor at USC, Omar Neraldin. Omar, nice to have you back with us, especially after today's bombshell testimony. In your legal opinion, what do you think was the most damning testimony from today? Yeah, thank you for having me. I think the most damning testimony legally was the facts that we learned, the specific facts that we learned that go towards Donald Trump's knowledge of what was happening the day of the insurrection and what he thought about it. We heard facts that Donald Trump knew the, the mob was armed and that he didn't care. He wanted the metal detectors taken away, the magnometers, so that his people, he said, let them in, let them march to the Capitol. And there was testimony that he wanted to join them at the Capitol and only because the Secret Service told him it's not safe there, there's not enough security to secure the Capitol, that he was taken back to the West Wing. He knew the Capitol wasn't secure. He knew that the mob was armed. He knew that they were chanting, you know, hang Mike Pence, and he didn't care. He even thought that Pence deserved that kind of treatment. This is really important because knowledge and intent are foundational to most, if not all, criminal statutes. And so if the Department of Justice is watching, I'm sure Mer these set off alarm bells in Merrick Garland's head and his top aides at the Justice Department in terms of how likely it is that they could bring charges against the former president himself. If that testimony is accurate, that Pat Cipollone wanted to keep Donald Trump from going to the Capitol, why was it so important legally to do that? Well, I think that Pat Cipollone knew that there were several laws, including sedition, that uh, could be invoked or could be charged against Trump and those around him who were kind of aiding and abetting this behavior to go to the Capitol and deny the certification of the election. Sedition as a criminal statute is one or more persons um, trying to overthrow the government. and marching with an armed mob to the Capitol with the stated intent of stopping the certification of election sure sounds like trying to overthrow the government to me. Omar, a lot of her testimony today was recounting what she heard uh, from other people when she talked about what happened uh, in the presidential vehicle, the beast as it's called. She was saying that this was relayed to her. Is this not hearsay? This would stand up in a court of law? Well, I think most of her testimony actually were things that she heard herself. She kind of relayed uh, that she heard, overheard Trump, right, when he was giving a speech before the, uh, before the crowd, before they started marching or as they were marching to the Capitol, saying, take down the magnometers, right? She heard him say that Mark Pen Mike Pence deserved it. What she didn't hear him say or wasn't witnessed was what happened in that uh, Secret Service limo. Um, so that may be hearsay, although there are several exceptions to hearsay, including being able to testify about what someone told you, not necessarily about what the underlying truth of that is. So she could testify in court as an exception to hearsay that this was relayed to me, not as it actually happened, but someone close to the president thought it happened. Uh, so there are several exceptions to hearsay, and I wouldn't get too caught up on kind of the narrative around hearsay because a lot of what she said was something that she directly witnessed hearing or seeing. That's all admissible. At least somebody in the Secret Service is leaking to about four or five major news organizations tonight saying that Donald Trump did not try to grab the wheel, did not assault Secret Service agents, that he wanted to go to the Capitol. That is true, mm -hmm. but some of the rest of it isn't. We'll see if they come forward and testify under oath to that in, in the weeks ahead. Um, one of the things that was also really interesting was this question over pardons. Um, here is an exchange between Liz Cheney and Cassidy Hutchins on that. Rudy Giuliani ever suggest that he was interested in receiving a presidential pardon related to January 6th? He did. Ms. Hutchison, did White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows ever indicate that he was interested in receiving a presidential pardon related to January 6th? Mr. Meadows did seek that pardon, yes ma'am. So why would somebody seek a pardon if they weren't concerned about you know, criminal exposure? And, and, and is there reason for a, a, a pardon? Do you see criminal exposure in what we're seeing? I think, you know, we, we've heard testimony from the committee uh, earlier on in the month 
about Rudy Giuliani being kind of the mastermind behind the idea that the election was stolen and uh, kind of then coordinating what needed to happen in order to kind of get the movement on the ground to advance that theory. So he could be charged, I think, with a, in a conspiracy theory um, of, of sedition. Mark Meadows, right, aiding and abetting, he didn't do anything to prevent, but we still don't know enough about what he did do to support the president. Um, and this testimony from Cassidy Hutchinson and is so important um, towards that because Mark Meadows up until this point has refused really to cooperate with the committee. He sent over some text messages that happened during that day but hasn't testified in front of the committee. So Cassidy Hutchinson, as uh, his top aide, um, really gets some insight into his role. And I'm thinking that the four interviews that she did in closed door sessions to the committee have more information about Mark Meadows' role. And I'm sure the Justice Department is really eager to get that those transcripts from those four previous um, uh, interviews that she had. And Meadows and Giuliani were not granted those pardons, uh, as we know. No, I, people don't ask pardons unless they think they did something wrong. There you go. We'll leave it right there. Omar Nereldin, USC law professor, thank you so much for your perspective tonight. Thanks, Marla. Thanks, Alex.